What up YouTube? Today we're going to be smoking some stuffed Cornish game hens. When you're smoking these Cornish game hens, just like smoking chicken, one of the things you want to do is try and make sure that you don't dry them out. So I will be brining my Cornish game hens if only for a couple hours, just going to add a little bit more moisture and a little bit more flavor. So this brine is very basic. I need about a gallon for the four Cornish game hens. So I'm doing, a, I, got, I take a saucepan and I put a half a gallon in here and then I put in a cup of kosher salt, a cup of brown sugar. I did add in some of this Montreal chicken seasoning. I'm gonna use this on the surface as well. I think I could add a good savory flavor to the Cornish game hen. And then I just bring this to um, a, a low boil, not even necessarily boil, but just getting it simmering where all the salt and everything like that gets distributed out and breaks down. Uh, Cause you don't wanna have a bunch of salt sitting at the bottom of your brine. And um, I'll just add another gallon to this, or sorry, correction, I add another half a gallon to this to make this a full gallon brine. Pretty simple. My Cornish game hens are still a little bit frozen, which is to say they're still a lot frozen, as you can see. Um, so, but I'm gonna chuck these in the brine. You only have to brine these for a couple hours uh, for this flavor to take. I'll just put them in the brine and let that actually thaw as they brine as well. So I'm gonna brine them for more than the uh, two hour period, just cause I know about an hour or so of that, plus is gonna be just the rest of this ice thawed off. Time to brine. If you have a big old plastic bin, you could, which I do. I didn't realize that. I'm gonna be using my sous vide bin, doubles as a brining bin for large meals like this. And I can put the whole thing in the fridge if I have to. I don't think I'm gonna in this case because by the time all this stuff falls out and gets some good brine on, it's probably gonna be time to cook them. I'll just give this a quick stir and let it sit. I get the extra in there. Got to watch for these little guys to try to escape. They're just waiting to burn something. I'm gonna go ahead and use apple because it's here. Now we proceed to get the smoke chamber set up. I gotta get my water pan in here, but I gotta do something first. You'll see why. Um, I'm using this new Good Grill. I used to have a, uh, a different thermometer that I would use. It started to go kaput, read bad settings or bad uh, temperatures. So we upgraded to this bad boy. And I'll do a full review on this eventually too. I really like this though, because it gives you the screens here and it hooks to an app on your phone. You can program, this can do six probes. I'm not gonna do six probes. I'm not gonna do six probes. I'm gonna do probe one for the smoker, probe two for the meat. There we go. I'm gonna drain off the brine. I'm actually gonna use that as the marinade, or not as the marinade, as the moisture for the water pan. Now we're waiting for two things. We're waiting for the temperature to come up and stabilize. We're also waiting for that smoke to turn from the uh, crazy white smoke that you're looking at right now to the nice smoke. Blue smoke. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I always use a water pan. Not only does it add moisture to the smoke chamber, but that moisture actually helps the meat uptake the smoke flavor. So it's not just for keeping it tender, it's also for increasing the smoke flavor. Give these guys a quick rinse, pat them dry. Okay. 
now we're gonna stuff these birds. And these are great because each one of these is personal size. Eat one full paint game hen, cut it in half if you wanna split it up. But you don't have to deal with all the work of carving a chicken. I'm gonna be using that Montreal chicken on this to keep it simple. Uh, I already got the brine that I had this, these guys sitting in and I'm gonna do something that I have not tried before for my binder on these guys. I'm gonna use mayonnaise because I read that it's kind of like oil and butter and salt and all that kind of crap. Sounds good to her. It's real scientific about this. I feel like if you're doing barbecue and you haven't washed your hands 60 or 70 times, you're screwing it up. Give these guys a healthy coating of deliciousness. And I cook these breast side up. Some people do it breast side down, so the theory to keep the breast from drying out. I feel like the way they open up right now allows for more smoke to get through the bird. Let's get them on the smoker. Now we just start smoking, monitor our fire. I just threw some more wood on, um, move the thermometer to so there's not by any metal, which is radiating heat off, and just keep this bad boy sealed up and let it cook. I got one probe in the smoker, and I got another probe in the largest game hen, so that's gonna give me my internal temperature. Just gonna keep adding charcoal and uh, wood to keep this thing smoking until we get the birds up to 165. See what's going on in here. Temperatures at 120 internal, so we still got some time to go, but I want to see what we're working with. I know you guys are excited. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Looking good. Smokes like tear gas. So yeah, so yeah right now um, temperature's good. Smoke out that's good. So we're just gonna let these guys keep cooking because they look good. Just pull these bad boys off. 163. They're gonna hit 165. I'm gonna cover them up right now and just tender, juicy. I'll wrap these guys up, let them rest. Did you see? Mm. Mm. These turned out delicious. I will definitely be doing this again. Um, pulled a couple samples off, had a battery issue with the GoPro, so I didn't get to film it, but the wings, the legs, they just pull right off. The meat is tender and delicious. A lot of that's because of the brine. The um, skin got a good crisp crust to it. So the mayo, it, it works for that. I'm, I'm gonna do that again. But yeah, delicious, easy recipe, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Bon appetit.